You'll remember that when we talked about the Poisson process, uh, we found it useful to have some different definitions. And the third definition we had for the Poisson process was in terms of infinitesimal increments, as in what happens in a very small amount of time. And similarly, for more general Markov jump processes, it can also be useful to look at what happens in a very small amount of time. For the Poisson process, this allowed us to write down a differential equation called the forward equation. And later on in this section, we'll be able to do that for general processes first. So let's start by thinking about what happens to one of our Markov jump processes in a very small amount of time. OK, so suppose that we're at state i, at state i, and we're looking at what happens in a little period of time. Uh, so our time period is from t to t plus tau, where tau, as before, is a, is a very small number. So we might not move at all during that time, because it's a very small period of time, so maybe our Markov chain won't jump anywhere. So the probability that happens is the probability that our waiting time, t, well, let's call it t1, but we could call it t anything, uh, is bigger than tau, because by the memoryless property, this is still an exponential distribution we have to wait. So that's the tail probability of an exponential distribution, so that's e to the minus qi tau. But remember, tau is extremely small. Uh, so what does e to the minus something extremely small look like? Uh, you uh, presumably know from like looking at things like Taylor series that we have this expression, e to the x is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 6, etc. But all those other terms in the Taylor series are, of course, little o of x if, uh, if x is very small. So in terms of this, we have a 1 minus qi tau plus other terms in tau using the standard exponential there. So the probability we make no move is about 1 minus Q, qi tau. OK, but then perhaps we will move, and then we'll have to move somewhere. So maybe we move to some state j, for example. What's the probability that happens? Well, first we have to move somewhere at all, which means that this... Uh, time that we wait, t1 has got to be less than or equal to tau in order for us to move. Uh, and then we actually have to move from i to j, which happens with probability ij, rij. So uh, the probability we move is 1 minus the probability that we did. The probability that we do move is 1 minus the probability we didn't move. So this is just qi tau this little o of tau from up above here, it's 1 minus that. And then the probability uh, that we move to j is rij, which you'll remember from the definition, is qij over qi. Uh, we've got a qi that cancels there, haven't we? So this comes out as qij tau, this little o of tau. Uh, note that any other way we could move to j, for example, by moving to k first and then to j, that's all lower order terms. So other ways of moving to j, for example, by moving twice in the time period, those are all extremely unlikely. Those are all little o of t, uh, tau events, so we can ignore those. Uh, so putting together everything we have there, what we have just shown is that uh, probability that x t plus tau equals some j given x t equals i is, well, we have different expressions for whether i is equal to j or not. If i is equal to j, then that's the probability we stay where we are, which we saw was 1 minus qi tau plus little o of tau. 
and we have an device not equal to j, and we have what we just had here on this line above. It's q i j tau. It's a little o of tau. If you wanted to, you could actually take that as the definition of a Markov jump process. Uh, I prefer the definition in terms of the exponential holding time and the jump chain, but this is an equivalent definition for the reasons we've just seen.